We're glad you're here for a great session, the e-boardroom digital decision-making. I'm going to talk about uh, boardroom, and I had the experience to uh, go with a client. I do executive recruitment, and I had the experience to be in a client's board meeting presenting uh, some things, and they all were digital and had the computers there. So it's kind of neat because a lot of the hospitals I deal with don't have such uh, amenities. Two great speakers, Lynn Orphan, uh, to my immediate left, is the CEO of a 290-bed hospital with 500 physicians, 1,600 staff, has about 30 years, a number of hospitals. Uh, he was in the Navy, he has a Bachelor of uh, Science from uh, the Naval Academy and two master's degrees from George Washington University. And um, John Combs, to the far left there, is a physician. MD, President and COO of the Center of Healthcare Governance of the American Hospital Association. He serves as a senior fellow in the Hospital Re Research and Education Trust. He received his medical degree from Cornell University, which I learned is in New York City versus Ethica. Um, he did his postgraduate uh, training in Boston City Co Hospital, certified internal medicine by the uh, American Board of Internal Medicine. And... Um, he uh, has a management certification from the American College of Physician Executives. He serves on the boards of uh, the Hospital Sisters uh, Health System and the West Virginia Medical Institute. He lectures on governance and quality. Join me in a warm welcome for our speakers today. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to uh, open this up. First of all, you know who we are. We were just introduced, so we won't spend any time on that. Um, and to tell you that we have no conflicts uh, in this presentation. We have three objectives today. Uh, and uh, success for us at the end of the day would be you understanding each one of these. So uh, as you uh, think about the presentations, think about what the messages we're trying to get out here. One is that governance is changing. It's become entirely more uh, complex, more accountable, um, and has much more responsibilities. And with that complexity and accountability comes the need for rapid uh, information and access to that information. Two, that there are tools out there, already developed. These are web-based tools that support governance decision-making, uh, facilitate that decision-making, uh, present information in a, a timely fashion. And then three, we will describe some of those products, uh, what the expected return on investment is on those pro products, and how you might go about implementing them. So joining me this morning uh, is Lynn, who will take it from here to talk about the uh, first couple of items. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate it. The, uh, today, it's obviously a lot more demanding uh, to be a board member than it was 30 years ago when I first got started in this business. Uh, Back then, p folks used to walk into a board meeting for the most part, and uh, the books would be in front of them, and they'd look at the data many times for the first time. And uh, that, that's just not uh, good governance today. Uh, we can't have that. Folks got to be well informed. They've got to make good decisions. They need a lot of, lot of data. And uh, it's, it's way, way beyond what it was uh, back in those days. Uh, there's some studies out there that show that it, it takes uh, 100 and 20 hours to 200 years of, or 200 hours of preparation per year for uh, uh, preparing for board and, and committee meetings. I'm sure that range is probably even greater than that. Uh, the uh, data shows that uh, numbers are increasing and in, in that uh, we do take more time to prepare. Increasing oversight from the IRS, uh, all government agencies, Congress, Attorney General, uh, we all are familiar with uh, some of the congressmen that have, have really focused on the not-for-profit communities. And uh, so we've got to have good data uh, at our board meetings to, to deal with that and uh, make sure that everybody has proper information to make good decisions. Boards spend, on the average, only about 20 hours a year in getting education. I think that's probably something that needs to, to be enhanced also. The uh, complexity in, in healthcare industry is is continuing to grow, and of course, with the uh, development of the uh, Affordable Care Act last year, that even becomes more uh, likely that uh, 
We need more information for our boards. There's uh, probably going to be a lot of restructuring, uh, mergers, acquisitions over the next uh, several years as this consolidation continues. I was recently at a conference where it was predicted that by a futurist that in um, not too many years we'd have five or six hospital systems in America covering all hospitals. I think that's a little drastic. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but we certainly are going to see increased consolidation and continued uh, the technology in, in facilities and the oversight from the government and the public, it continues to grow. So we've got to be able to uh, continue to provide greater information to our boards uh, for that decision making. And it's very important that we provide our board members with good information to make these decisions. Um, many of us are very fortunate to have great boards in our facilities, uh, especially in light of how much we pay them to, uh, to do that job which is norm normally zero. Uh, maybe they get a nice Christmas gift and a couple dinners, and that's about it. So we've, we've got to uh, provide them the proper respect and give them the information and uh, to help create that culture that uh, the public is looking for today, and that's transparency and accountability. John? Yep. Well, from a trustee's perspective, uh, everything Lynn said is absolutely true. Our, our job, I think, has become much more difficult. In the short time I've been a trustee for about five years in a complex system, uh, I find it even more difficult to make good decisions, particularly when I am not in, have the information at my fingertips on previous decisions or the, uh, the history of our decision-making. And yet I'm being held more accountable for that. And as Lynn said, it's uh, with great pay that I, I do this, uh, an investment of a lot of time, but I still know that there are people looking over my shoulders. Uh, as you might be aware, there are some new standards from the Joint Commission uh, charging boards to be more accountable, particularly around their primary fiduciary responsibility, which is uh, patient safety and quality. I mean, we exist for the services of our community and our patients, and their primary interest is in our quality and patient care. And so, therefore, as a fiduciary for those uh, stakeholders, um, I see my role as being primarily to assure that the organization is providing high quality care. And I can't know that without timely information about the care that's being uh, provided in the organization. We also understand that our role is not just the fiduciary role of oversight, looking at the numbers, looking at past performance. It's also the role of envisioning the future for the organization, uh, planning the roadmap from our mission to our vision, uh, helping the organization achieve that vision. And you can't do that without having information about your patient population, your community, and information at your hands to help you uh, form your strategy and to derive from that a strategic perspective around the organization. Um, we also know that in those two roles, uh, fiduciary oversight and strategic visioning, um, we have to assess our own performance. Uh, we are becoming much more accountable for our role as trustees. We hold the CEO very accountable for the performance of the organization. We hold the medical staff accountable for the quality of care. But as trustees, we have to hold ourselves accountable for the quality of our decisions and the quality of our governance. We can't do that without having information at our fingertips. Uh, we also are there to mitigate risk for the organization and to protect that organization from uh, really financial risk, but more importantly these days, clinical risk. Uh, the risk of, of performing um, unnecessary procedures or uh, being involved in uh, quality and safety uh, uh, disservice to our community. So uh, clearly boards are much more accountable and they understand that accountability and trying to find ways to evaluate their own performance and measure that performance against uh, uh, standards that exist in the community. We are also responsible for performing this under our two fiduciary duties. There are three, uh, loyalty, care, and obedience, and two of them come into play here when exercising due care. Uh, that's the, uh, what a reasonable person would do in the same situation faced with the same information. 
understanding that you can only exercise that duty of care with the right information presented to you at the right time in a uh, format that you're able to use. Uh, additionally, we have that uh, duty of obedience, which means that Every decision we make has to be made within the framework of existing law and regulation. Uh, we are under intense scrutiny to make sure that we carry out these two uh, duties. As uh, Lynn referenced, uh, we have some good friends in the federal government, um, uh, particularly uh, Senator Grassley when he was on the Senate Finance Committee, looking at standards of not-for-profit governance and what we would be held to in, in, in uh, uh, applying these uh, duties of care and obedience. Um, and the good news is uh, that uh, Senator Grassley now is in the minority and he's off the Finance Committee. The bad news is that the Republicans are ascending to the majority and he will be the chair of the Judiciary Committee. So things won't get any easier in terms of his oversight. Uh, and then uh, governing agencies, uh, the, your state's attorney general, um, even uh, your uh, uh, bondholders are requiring certain standards in governance and certain levels of high performance in decision making for boards. None of this can be done without the right information in front of us. All of this really leads to increasing pressure on us to perform. And how we've dealt with that is to have more frequent meetings so we can have more face-to-face -face exchange of information. And as was pointed out, you know, uh, it's great to be a volunteer when you think you're only meeting four times a year, and then you move up to 12 times a year with the same amount of information for each one of those meetings. It makes your job a lot more difficult. Um, there is a lot more information to review. Uh, I was saying earlier that my uh, board pack, and I don't know what yours looks like, but mine for a system uh, runs about six to eight inches thick when it's printed out. And, you know, those, those are three, four hundred pages of information that we have to absorb and usually in the week before the board meeting because it's generally when we get the board packet. And if they're running late, it could be four or five days before the board meeting. And then um, there needs to be more frequent communication between meetings. We're constantly having uh, calls and, uh, uh, and sort of uh, web exchanges between meetings, uh, which takes up lots of time. Given this pressure for information, we wanted to ask you, how do you like to get information? How do you get your news, for instance? Is it from the traditional way of the Newspaper? How many of you get your news from newspapers now? The primary source. Okay. Or are you getting it on some, uh, your Blackberry or iPhone? <laughs> uh, do you get it off your laptop? And more, more frequently, what are you using? Your iPad. How many of you got iPads now? <laughs> now, as a board member, how do you think they like to get their information? It's changing just like it's changing for you. Um, they're moving away from paper. They're moving away to getting more timely information at a point uh, and a location of their choosing. So enabling effective governance means enabling effective communication. You have to be able to give information to the uh, board members at the right time and in the right place and the right type of information. One of the things I always struggle with as a board member in, in my work with hospital boards is that we tend to give board members a lot of management information to make decisions by. And governance information is at a very different level. Governance information is about steering the organization. The word governance comes from the Latin to steer. And when you look at how you steer, it's usually from the points of the compass or stars, few points of critical information. And yet we give overwhelm our boards with information and we give it to them usually right before they have to make the decision. There's a real need to make sure that we have an ongoing source of information and the right information to our boards to help them navigate the complexity of healthcare because it has gotten more complex and with healthcare reform coming, it will become even more complex. 
It will ease the burden of those 12 board meetings and those 500 uh, page documents if we can give the information continuously and have the ability to update that information as needed so that board members can absorb it over time. And the real goal of all of this is to create a high performing board with the best decision making possible. Remember, we have boards in the first place that are diverse and have a variety of perspectives and experience because we find better decision making comes from diverse perspectives. But it also comes from timely information. So we can have the best diverse board with the best experience, best set of perspectives, and if we can't give them information in the form or at the time they need it, we defeat the purpose of having a board in the first place. So how do we generally give boards information? As I said, the printed board built, that eight to, uh, six to eight inches of printed material that uh, pulls your shoulder out of the socket as you're running the catch planes, uh, that, uh, that uh, really you can uh, read on planes and leave behind on planes, which I've done in the past, uh, and that you have to either uh, archive or or shred after the board meeting and have, then have no record of your questions or decision makings. Um, those packets take a lot of time by staff to prepare. And in general, the information can't be that fresh because it usually has to be aggregated a week before it's sent out, which is a week before the board meeting. So now you're two weeks before the board meeting with information. It's already two weeks old. And we know that things change so fast in healthcare now that that makes it very difficult to get timely decision making. The other thing is it takes a lot of time by them to do this, and it's a lot of cost because most board packets, because we feel it's important uh, and we don't trust the U.S. mail, we overnight these big heavy packages to, you know, 15 or 20 board members uh, to make sure they get them at their home or office uh, prior to the board meeting. So this is a very costly and inefficient way to do things. Um, it, it doesn't allow us to give timely information. Uh, if we need to update that information, it's usually done at the board meeting where you're surprised that there's a supplement to your pack sitting on your desk rather than having the information uh, a couple of days ahead of time when it was available. Uh, it's not a very secure process because there's always a danger of those Papers and, and again, we're not, we don't have nuclear secrets at our hospitals, but there are uh, competitive issues, uh, strategic issues that you don't want out in public. There's certainly issues around credentialing or peer review that you don't want out in the public. And then again, these are very, very bulky uh, and heavy. And I think the real critical issue is is that there's really no archive. Uh, of the data that you use to make decisions. You know, decisions are iterative, and so when you go back at a board meeting six months after you made the original decision to revisit it, it's nice to have the historical perspective and the background information that help you make that decision in the first place. That's very difficult to achieve with paper. So good governance requires this timely access to the right information. Um, it ha you can't be prepared for meetings unless you're up to date on the information. You can't ask those critical questions because, after all, that is the role of the board, to challenge the organization, to think further, to think differently, and you can't do that unless you have all the information they have going into those meetings. It helps you frame up those critical issues for the organization and to be very specific about what your concerns and what the pitfalls of the uh, decision may be. And uh, it lets you stay on top of all the risks that come with uh, decision making uh, that can affect outcomes. This information should come to the board in a continuous fashion, not just in that one week period before the board meeting, and be available to them at, at a time and a place that is convenient for them to make decisions. So we ask our organizations to invest heavily in technology so we can have better clinical decision making, that we can improve our patient care, that we can be more efficient in our care delivery. Do we ask the same questions of the board? 
How are you to using technology to make better governance decisions, to be more efficient in your decision making, and to achieve better outcomes? And the technology exists to do this. And the question for you all in asking your boards, is it time for your boards to plug in and to get with the requirements that you're asking your organizations to make? Boards can set the example in information technology by leading the way in their own operations. Lynn? Thank you, John. I guess the, uh, the question is, and uh, that John has framed, is it, uh, is it time to plug in? And, and quite frankly, board portals are, uh, have been around for a few years now. I don't think there's a, a lot of facilities using them, but they're relatively easy to use. They're, they're very intuitive all internet-based, and they're specifically designed for one purpose, and that's to get information in the hands of board members so that they can have better data to make good decisions uh, and also to communicate with each other between meetings. It uh, gives the time for the folks to dig deep into the materials and allow them to come into the board prepared uh, for a discussion, for decisions. I think, as I mentioned earlier, at, uh, 30 years ago, I think a lot of folks walked into the board meeting. And that's the first time they saw any of the data. But it was a, it was a much simpler time. Uh, everything in the in the world was probably a little simpler at that point in time. But uh, that that just can't can't be uh, condoned today. So we've got to give folks the time to put that quality improvement cycle in, in action. It's for folks to get the information, to consider it, and, and then take action, and then judge the results, and if they need to readjust, it gives them time to do so. The uh, communications today are so much faster than what they were even 30, 40 years ago. Uh, we know what's happening in every part of the world as it's happening. Uh, it's just uh, absolutely incredible, and probably, to some degree, it's probably too much information. But... Uh, what we want to do is to give the information as soon as it is possible to our board members, making sure that they're up to date rather than just getting a, a bolus of information one time a month. And uh, in doing that, I think that we do lessen the risk uh, to our hospitals and to our boards for their decisions. Um, situation at Crittenton when we uh, was about four or five years ago, we had uh, a lot of, lot of administrative time and, of course, with uh, cost controls and everybody watching their labor dollars and, and the like, we're not uh, overstaffed by any means. And it was taking a tremendous amount of time for my staff to put these documents together uh, and then collate them, get them properly put together, boxed, and then sent out uh, via FedEx to our board members. Uh, we have a very, uh, very capable board. Uh, we've got 15 members. And uh, those of you who are real quick with math realize that that adds up to more than 15 when listed it out there. A few folks qualify under more than one category. Uh, we had recently moved into a new uh, area of the hospital, and we had a uh, fairly high-tech uh, features in our boardroom with rear screen projection and the like. And, you know, when you got things like that, you want to try and use them a little bit. So we... Uh, I read a, a journal article somewhere. I don't, I'm not even quite sure where I picked it up of talking about the paperless board um, room and uh, asked our partners at CareTech if they had the capability to help us with that. And, uh, of course, the answer was yes. And uh, we sat down and, and looked at the product and uh, thought that we could make the modifications to make it work for us. And uh, the next board meeting, I floated a trial balloon with our board just to ask them what they would think of, of going to a paperless system. And it was overwhelming that uh, they said, uh, yes, give it a try. Let's, let's, let's do that. So I arranged for the purchase of 24 kind of minimally capable uh, laptops that had wireless capability. Uh, and because uh, we, were, we were wireless in the hospital, we've been on the wireless list for a few years and uh, as well as the most wired which is kind of oxymoronic but uh, we're happy to be recognized both ways uh, and uh, we sat down with our with our partners at CareTech the the administrative assistant and myself and kind of laid out the design of what we wanted included in the in the uh, site 
and uh, talked about the various committees, the various pieces of information that we would like to have available to them 24-7. And uh, they, they laid it out for us how to do that and, and helped us uh, kind of design the site to be intuitive and, and very easy to use. And uh, we both received the training to uh, do the uploading. Now, fortunately for her, she does all the uploading, so, but uh, that, that happens. And then when we were ready, uh, we announced that uh, at, the, at a board meeting we were going paperless for the next meeting. And we uh, pulled up on, this, on the rear screen projector the uh, site and demonstrated how to uh, access it, how to uh, sign in with their passwords, and then uh, showed them how to uh, just click on the various uh, pieces of it, pull down the, the information that was needed. And... Uh, Everybody sort of picked up on it pretty easily uh, at the next board meeting. Of course, there was a few folks that had forgotten how to how to do those steps, but we walked them through that. And uh, what we do now is uh, my administrative assistant fires up all the computers ahead of the meeting, so that and they're all signed into the website, so it facilitates uh, ease of of folks getting in. And uh, early on, for the first meeting or so, we actually had the website open on the rear screen projection so that folks, uh, if they were having a little trouble on their own per computer, they followed through on the screen with us, and, uh, and that only lasted a, a meeting or two, and then everybody started feeling pretty comfortable with the, the laptops. And eventually, uh, now that I think, I think we're in our fourth year now, <coughs> virtually everybody got on board, uh, though there's a, there's a couple of dinosaurs that uh, you know, are a little resistive to the process, and uh, it's not all age-dependent because I believe our youngest member, is the fellow that uh, has his assistant in his office print out the entire package in color and bring it in in a notebook. So, but that's uh, that's that's their problem, not mine. So, uh, but we don't print any books, and uh, I don't think if if we had the uh, had a poll today, I don't think anybody would vote to move back uh, backwards on it. It's uh, everybody's very uh, very happy with the uh, with the process and the results. No. John? Thanks, Lynn. Our story at the hospital system, the health system, is a little bit different. Um, we didn't go the route Lynn went, and, and I'll discuss the results of not doing it that way. Uh, but one, we found ourselves in a very, very complex situation. Uh, the system has been around for a while. There was some underinvestment in facilities, and, and we were way behind in uh, relationships with physicians. So over a five-year period, we found ourselves engaged in multiple major strategic efforts, one around care integration and developing new care models, two around investments in plant and, and uh, acquisition of um, other facilities. And, and so we had a hard time tracking all our capital expenditures and all our decisions around all of these new uh, projects and looking at their performance. Um, there was really no way for the board to go back and track our progress along this strategic map when we were faced with at least four or five major decisions at every board meeting. So multiply that times 12 and you have 60 major decisions a year. All of those need to be revisited at some time. And when you're working off a, a paper board book that you've either shredded uh, on your exit or left on an airplane, you really didn't have a way to go back and look at all those decisions. Um, and, and clearly, our members uh, and our board members, most of them are my age or older, our institutional memory is not very good. Uh, I mean, you can get a debate about a unanimous decision that was made two months ago among all the board members about which way that decision went without any backup of, uh, the, uh, of uh, information. I don't know about you, but I find minutes are totally inadequate for capturing what goes on into the boardroom. You know, they're usually written at a very high level. Um, most of us really don't want to indicate that there was any um, uh, debate or, or discussion around it, or at least uh, articulate the points of that debated discussion, uh, which I find interesting because uh, one of the first things outside reviewers do when they look at your board meetings and see if there was uh, different 
different points of view and debate and discussion. So uh, a lot of that is lost in the minute taking and therefore affects how you remember the decision making, uh, affects that you are looking back on your decision and seeing if any of those pitfalls that you talked about in your discussions actually came true. Um, so therefore you can't look at the quality of that decision over time. And then finally, that, as I said, the, the physical bulk, uh, maybe it's my age, began to bother me about lugging all that material around. Our um, solution, as I said, was quite different. We turned to our IT department uh, to uh, implement a, a solution for us. And um, when I say we, it wasn't exactly the board. The board understood that we needed some sort of electronic system to track all this information and to help support our decision making and just turned it over to the administration who really didn't get back to us uh, about it and uh, uh, apparently on their own uh, investigated some vendors and then turned it over to the IT department at the institution uh, to come up with the solution, as I said. As a board member, that raised some concern in my mind because I don't know about your organizations, but we have our IT uh, departments running around in circles now trying to uh, implement an electronic rec uh, record at 13 different hospitals and maybe uh, 500 uh, clinic sites uh, throughout two states. And to divert their time from that to create for us a board portal seemed to me not necessarily the appropriate use of uh, resources. Second of all, they didn't ask for a lot of input from the board members, and, and that to me is problematic because there were certain things that I knew I wanted in the system, uh, least of which is your ability to take notes and to, to write all over those documents so that you at the board meeting can recall what questions you had as you uh, read the information. So our interim solution was this. I mean, this was our last board book. Well, that's fine because it's electronic and it saves you on the paper and I'm only carrying this around and not a, a big bulky uh, board book. But these are all PDF files. I can't write on them. So if I really am traveling on a plane, want to read them and put my questions down, I either have to print this out beforehand which defeats the purpose of having it in the first place, to put my notes on it, or I have to open up a whole separate document to record what I've read and what my questions are. So again, this inability to um, take notes becomes a big problem for me, and it would be something, if I was asked, would say was a, a key element of the design of the system that we use. So no board involvement uh, was problematic, and as I said, the IT investment uh, it was incredible in terms of their time and distraction from all the other things they had to do. Now, the last bullet is not true. It was as of two months ago when we put these slides together. We actually do have a portal, and I actually downloaded the um, portal into an app on my iPad, but it's a very static uh, portal. What happens is, again, you just download these same documents. There's no ability for note-taking. There is some uh, e-chat e we're allowed to do on it, but uh, and there are all our board documents like our charter and bylaws and reserve powers and everything else, but there's really nothing to help facilitate decision-making and support decision-making over time. Our search fun function is very limited because you really can't get into those uh, Adobe documents through the search engine. And so it makes it very difficult to, to, to find things out. In fact, I searched an item uh, coming down on the plane last night and found out that, that what I got were just lists of minutes going back to 2007 and not even the most current minutes around the issue. So they're really not all that helpful. So what are your choices as you, as you go forward in, and bring your board into this uh, electronic aid? One, you can do these homegrown applications, and, and my suggestion would be not to follow that route. It's just, it's incredibly costly, uh, it diverts the attention, and it probably cannot provide the functionality that you want uh, out of a system. Two, there's a lot of off-the-shelf products that are pretty basic um, that will do what I just talked about in terms of uh, archiving your uh, static documents and not let you really adjust or adapt them. But the way to go and the way most people are going are to sort of a licensed hosted um, uh, service where 
Uh, the whole service is provided by the third party. The maintenance of the, the site for you, the ongoing support is provided by the third party, and it's all web-based, so it's available wherever you are. It, it becomes easy to use, and I think most of our board members uh, are familiar with using the web, uh, know how to download documents if they need to. Uh, most of them are pretty intuitive. Uh, the key thing is they're secure. I mean, it's very hard to leave a, a web portal on a plane. Nobody's going to walk off with your documents. Uh, you you have them uh, uh, securely signed in and, and with levels of access for uh, board members. And then there are industry standards out there and best practices, and a lot of these third parties learn from their own clients and make adaptations. There's a, an article I referred to you in Great Boards. I don't know if you know that publication. It's uh, by Barry Bader, and he did a buyer's guide to e-portals for boards uh, back in 2009. Um, and, and this uh, implementation and customer support becomes very, very clear because in one of the case examples, he talked about a, a one, one firm where the organization asked for something that the uh, product didn't have. They built it for that organization and then they sold it in all their future versions of the product. So that's the advantage sometimes of using these third parties because they learn from their customers and they enhance their products over time. So, uh, Lynn, you want to talk about some of the essential sure. features and functionality? Sure. Appreciate that, Jeff. Obviously, some of the things that uh, we've talked about earlier need to be an essential piece of the, uh, of the, the new portal that you hopefully are considering. Uh, you need, obviously, the rapid access to, to the materials from anywhere, but uh, if, you, if it's web-based, that's a, that's a pretty simple process. The book creation, modification, distribution is, uh, is really taken care of. It's just documents individually downloaded from the, uh, from the web uh, to look at. Uh, these documents can be in any format. Most of the times we'll find that um, virtually the, most of the documents are in Word or Excel, uh, if it's uh, new numbers. And, but uh, PDFs and PowerPoints are a regular part of our board packets, too, when we have a presentation on a, on a project that we're asking the board to consider. Generally, it's put into a PowerPoint format, and then uh, that, that is the um, format or the display that uh, we discuss from at the board meeting. Uh, the online depository for current and archive board-related materials uh, cannot be underestimated. I think that uh, what John describes as the big book and asking people to shred it when he leaves or taking that book home and putting it on the shelf, um, God only knows where those things could end up. And that's, uh, again, as he said, it's not national security, but it is sensitive information when you start talking about peer review, credentialing, and, and, the, and the like. Uh, so it is something that does have to have a certain level of security, and I just don't feel comfortable uh, with how those things are left lying around uh, anywhere, at work, home, um, the bus, <laughs> airplanes, whatever. Uh, and then uh, the, should it have the ability to document uh, uh, or marks on the documents with notes, uh, as uh, Dr. Combs just talked about. And then there's a whole host of other things that can be added onto the website, too, the board calendar for all the committee meetings and, and like. Uh, any kind of social events, they can be on the uh, uh, website uh, in addition. And then the contact directory has the entire board, uh, all, everybody listed with their, all their pertinent numbers and email addresses and, and the like. So it's, uh, it's very, very uh, flexible. You can add uh, anything you really want to to the site, and it makes it more uh, user-friendly for, uh, for the users. Um, also want to be able to have folks be able to discuss items prior to the board meeting should uh, folks want to talk about a particular issue. You've got email addresses. Uh, we don't have the, uh, the ability to, uh, at this point, at least I've not, I've not discovered it, to be able to have a, a poll uh, of the like or a digital signature, but uh, we do have search functionality. But again, you know, search functionality is somewhat limited to Word documents, and everything is is fairly uh, fairly secure on the uh, on the site. And 
obviously with that, working with a, an outside vendor such as Caretech, you have 24-7 phone support if you do have an issue that uh, precludes you from having good access uh, to the site. And uh, just one, I'll, I'll take this one and then I'll let you uh, finish it up. Uh, board portals are uh, obviously hosted in a secure place. They have role-based security, and uh, usually that's a lot safer than shipping by the U.S. Mail or FedEx or UPS, uh, whatever. And uh, only, a, only a single encrypted copy of each customer's data is maintained uh, at, the, at the site. And any deleted data is deleted, and it's uh, no longer accessible. But the, I think the, the neatest thing is have the ability to go back several years in, uh, on a website and be able to uh, review notes, minutes, and then discussion points from uh, previous meetings. John? Thanks, Len. So how do you implement, and, and this really uh, calls on you to understand your board culture, their comfort with uh, technology, um, and, and really are two different ways of doing it. Lynn obviously has a very progressive board because he really did do the big bang approach, which was uh, date certain there will be no more paper. You'll walk into the boardroom, you'll find laptops, you'll have received uh, uh, notifications ahead of time that the information's out there. Uh, you don't have to bring anything with you, and you sit down and you work from there. Uh, all you require is having a, a wireless connection uh, to the Internet in your hospital, and uh, people can pull down those uh, updated presentations. They can pull down all their information. They can uh, uh, go to their notes section and look at their notes uh, and the types of questions they want to ask. In my experience is very few boards that are ready to do that. And most of us have, have to take a much more traditional approach, which is, you know, uh, run simultaneously uh, the electronic formats and also continue to uh, print out the board materials for uh, some of the, uh, as was earlier described, dinosaurs on the board. And, and, and you will always have a few. Um, it's going to take a while till people get comfortable. But then you do that just like implementing IT with the medical staff to a certain point and then with a lot of warning uh, switch over to a fully electronic for format uh, and, and become truly paperless in the boardroom. Um, I think w what you'd find is most board members are anxious to do this. Um, they understand that they can't manage all of this information anymore uh, by either memory or by having uh, paper documents that they keep up on their shelves if they continue to have those documents. Uh, and so I think there you'll find there's a lot of hunger to move in this direction from your board members. The expected ROI for this is, uh, is really through the, the labor savings and the print reductions that you uh, uh, bring to the facility. Uh, lots of efficiency gains, and at the same time you get the efficiency gain, you get the satisfaction increase on the part of, the, of your board that that information is there. It's there when they want to read it and uh, makes the, for much, uh, I, don't, I can tell you that Numerous times when we were sending out books years ago, it was always a last-minute scramble, and because there's one piece of information that you didn't have, it holds up the rest of the process. This way, you can put everything you want out there that you have available, and if there's one piece that's uh, kind of laggard in, in uh, arriving in the, in the administrative office, uh, you can hold back on that and let that go out as soon as it becomes available. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's... It's the way folks are today, as, as John indicated. Folks really want to do this. They want the high tech, uh, and I think it'll, uh, it, it does assist to a certain degree in recruiting new uh, board members for the facility. Folks want to want to be well armed with uh, good information, and uh, we we've, we've got a lot of green efforts at our facility, and of course this uh, uh, saves a, a lot of trees in the process, and and that's a, and that's a good thing. So I go back to my original uh, questions for you um, one, one more. and ask you, 
Have we made the case that the board's role is evolving? You know, when I started out in this uh, field, mm -hmm. most of the board members uh, held that position out of honor. It was a, a, you know, a community prize to be on the hospital board. You weren't asked to do very much, uh, occasionally to give some money to the organization, but certainly your decisions were not critical to the functioning of the organization. That's all changed. And the responsibility clearly lies in the hands of board members. They are accountable for those decisions, and they are accountable not just to the stakeholders, but also to the, the government and others. In order to execute that new level of responsibility and accountability, uh, we've made the case, I think, for the critical need for timely information. Um, we require it of our clinicians. We require it of our management. We also now need to require it for our boards as well. And that information has to be accurate. It has to be in real time. And it really needs to support effective decision-making and make the case that those decisions are good decisions in follow-up. I guess to add on to that, uh, web-based tools such as this board portal can make you the, the jobs easier, uh, the performance much more effective, and uh, I think it's this, this, just the right thing to do today. Uh, there is a measurable ROI for it. It isn't that uh, uh, expensive a process to, to move to, although buying 24 computers can cost a few bucks. Uh, but it is, it's the way to go. It is, puts the information in the, the right hands at the right time for folks to make good decisions. And I think as, uh, as we continue to move through the era of health care reform, it's going to become even more critical to have timely data, good data, solid data, deep data to uh, make these decisions because uh, it's, it's imperative for all of our success to, uh, to, uh, to do that with our boards. And it's uh, valuable today, as it says on the slide, and indispensable tomorrow. So I would encourage everybody to fully consider moving towards some level of uh, web portal. I think we have some time for questions. And we'll let Arthur. We've had a great presentation. I happen to be, have been on both sides from being a CEO of hospitals and just rotating off a board. And we were kind of semi. And the smart boards have helped a little bit in some of the boardrooms. I don't know how many of you have that. How many of you have gone digital in your facilities? Several of you. It is interesting, um, and there are different solutions. We've had a great um, perspective of a hospital and a hospital system. What kind of questions do we have for these gentlemen? Starting here. I'll, add, I'll take the question. Uh, I think that uh, anything you can do to get that information out there, even if it's not the complete set of data, but to put it in their board members' hands in a timely manner is important. And uh, I, I did make a note to myself, too, and I, I overlooked my note. But uh, if I was to do it today, I'd probably, rather than buying laptops and leaving them at the hospital, uh, I've heard of some places actually buying laptops and giving them to the board members and asking them to transport them back and forth. But I think virtually everybody today has some form of a, of a computer in their home or office where they have access. And so it's, we, we decided to leave them at the hospital. It's a much safer rather than transporting them and banging them around. But I probably would uh, give due consideration because they're, they're less expensive to the iPads today. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I just want to contribute something to this. I, I think that route's okay, but I think you really need to have input from your board because I think a lot of times we think we have a lot more functionality and it'll work for them without asking them if it will work for them. So bring them into the process, and I agree. I would use an iPad, but again, if you're using your own institution, Sometimes you can't make the adaptations you need for an iPad. I'll tell you, I was looking at one of our board presentations, and they had printed out in Adobe all the PowerPoints horizontally. Well, there's no tool on Adobe in the iPad, the way we get at it through the portal, to rotate those. So every time I went to rotate it, 
you know, with the iPad, it rotated the slide horizontally again. So all the slide presentations were in the back. So think of things like that. Yes, ma'am. I, you know, w once again, I, I'm, I'm not an attorney, so I can't, can't tell you. I, I think most attorneys would be pretty conservative about that. But currently I make notes. And, I, you know, if I still had those paper documents, and if they were discoverable, they would take those. So I don't think it's anything uh, more than we're currently doing. The record may be, exist a little bit longer, it may be easier to search on. But, you know, my questions are, I think, from a liability perspective, actually show that you're act acting with due diligence and with reasonable care because you're putting up real questions. So, I, I mean, I, again, I'm not the attorney, but I know most of these products have no taking ability, and I don't think it's been a problem for anybody. I don't, know I don't know, think so. Well, the other aspect is, you know, I just rotated off after being on a hospital board for six years. And I have two file drawers full of all my board notes, not organized, just kind of put in piles. And, you know, I don't think the attorneys could get those, but I still liked <laughs> being able to write. And so I would print out certain things. But you can always have a printed copy of the agenda, too, and take a few notes. And if you just save the agenda with a few notes, you don't have a whole lot of excess um, paper. But the laws are changing, too, in the states. And speaking of minutes, which they didn't address a lot, in Kansas, we just had a law passed that we have to put who approved, who made the motion and who seconded it by name in the minutes, which makes it interesting in minute taking. But yet we still, in that board and several others I'm on, keep very generic board minutes that do not cover a lot of the discussion. And as a matter of fact, when I was the secretary of the board, I actually reduced some of the notes about the discussion because of the liability issues. And so it's kind of a catch-22 in a lot of ways on that. You want to have enough about the issue and what was discussed, but not enough to incriminate you on your decision you might have made. Other questions? Yes, sir. Absolutely. It's available anytime. Yeah, you, and you can go today on our site, if you're a board member, to have access with codes to go back and review something that happened in uh, July of, uh, you know, 08. You can re review the packet from that date. It's all, all archived very, very nicely in there. Yes, sir. We've uh, we've gone through a Jayco uh, survey since then, and they and they do like it. They think it's uh, you know kind of the cat's meow. <laughs> yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am. That article I referenced from Barry Beta has a list of four different uh, groups. I don't recall them all, but one was uh, Director's Desk, which is uh, a non-healthcare um, uh, model, but it's been adapted, and about 35% of their clients are healthcare. Uh, Care Tech, we told you about. There's one with the governance institution called Governance or governance. So there's, there's a whole host of them out there that you, you can look at. So I would take a look at that. That article was a starting place. I'm sorry, it was in Great Boards. It's, at, it's free. It's accessible. Greatboards.com. It's in 2001. Just a search. Uh, buyer's Guide to E-Portals. Okay? Yes, sir. Do you or are you having plans to take this down to the committee level as far as we do. We do with all our committees on the on the portal also. So it's uh, it has the the finance committee, the uh, uh, strategic planning committee, all that is on there. One of the things we don't do is we we have a joint conference committee that that is delegated board decisions on uh, credentialing and that and those packets are just a little too cumbersome yet to get on there. So that one is not on there, but we are also. 
as I indicated earlier, we have a for-profit subsidiary of uh, home health agencies, durable medical equipment, and on and on. And uh, we're in the process now of developing a new portal for them, as well as taking a look at the, our foundation and having a separate portal for them. One more question. We're out of time, and I also asked you to uh, fill out your surveys about this session so the hymns can get feedback. Yes, sir. We have not. We have not. I think our boardroom has that capability, but it's, a, it's a, an unused uh, capability at this point in time. We do have from time to time a, uh, a board member will call in and audio conference in, but not video. Some of the commercial products have a web, uh, sort of a web, a webinar function built into them, so you could do that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for coming. Uh, the speakers will be here for a few minutes if you want to talk with them further. And have a great day at the conference. Thank you.